right so arriving on your back and um as i as i mentioned we we're, we're going to do some more a bit more work around our feet like we did last wednesday and i think some you know i, I know at the moment <laughs> i have the, these winter feet and um it's helping to do some things to them and i just think also when we work with our feet it certainly put, i think it gives us this general sense of well-being hi sarah so we're starting on our back but doing some feet things lying on our back so if you settle down onto your back and lie with your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor and it's fine to keep socks on if you feel that you want to take them off equally you can do that and yeah just settle down and we're going to start working with one foot so maybe if we all start working with the right foot then hopefully we won't get too confused with the right foot and the right leg so the first thing you're going to do is lying on your back you're going to start to tap the front of your right foot on the floor so we did this in standing last week so just yeah keeping your heel on the ground lifting up your toes and tapping the ground now i don't when you're lying down you probably don't want to try and necessarily turn your foot in a circle it's just tapping the foot up and down so do this with the right foot a couple more times and then you're going to i suppose do the opposite movement you're going to then start to lift your heel and drop your heel down onto the ground hi mel we're just starting on our backs doing some feet things so lifting the heel and dropping your heel onto the ground a few times. And then come to alternate. So you're going to lift your heel and drop it and then lift your toes and tap the ground. So rocking between your heel and your toes. Good. That's nice. Don't overdo it because these movements can get a little, you know, they can start to bring tension into the ankle. So when you feel you've done enough, you're going to lengthen that leg out onto the floor. So the leg you've been working, the right leg, you're going to lengthen it out onto the floor and just roll the leg a little bit or bounce your knee. So just try and sort of let the leg be passive and relaxed. And then you're going to fold that right knee into your chest and hold around your knee for a moment. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then from there, you can take that right leg up towards the ceiling and you could give it a little bit of a shake out. And what I'd like you to do here is just a bit of sort of circling into your ankle. So that's one thing you could do. You could also do a bit of pointing your toes, pointing your heel. And you could also just do a bit of spreading your toes out. And if you want, you can support around the back of your leg with your hands if you like. This is, you know, just whatever feels more comfortable. And sorry, I must um, spotlight myself. I haven't done that, sorry. Let me do that. Okay. Good. And then, yes, when you've had enough of that leg being up, bring that foot back to stand on the floor. That's it. And then we're going to come. You can hear some strange noises. Shimmer Star is attacking the underneath of the sofa. So talking about cats. We're going to come onto the left leg now. So start by lifting up your left toes and tapping your left toes or the front part of your left foot on the floor. So we're going to do exactly the same movements on the left side now. That's it, so keeping your heel on the ground, lifting the front of your left foot, tapping it on the floor. Good. And then you can alternate to tapping your heel. So lifting your heel and tapping your heel on the ground. And if you feel that you need to move your foot a little bit, a bit further forwards to help you lift the heel more easily, you can do that. And then, come to alternating between the two, lifting the toes, lifting the heel. And yes, yeah, so, so you tap the toes on the ground, you drop the heel on the ground, that's it. So you can start to really um, feel this movement into your ankle, as well as just the contact of the sole of your foot on the floor. And then again, when you've had enough before your ankle gets too achy, lengthen your leg out on the floor and just give the leg a little bit of a roll or bounce your knee. That's it. 
And then from there, you're going to fold your left knee into your chest and have a breath, maybe a cycle of breath with your knee folded in towards you, letting your breath come in, letting your breath leave you and then taking your leg up towards the ceiling. And again, it's really up to you, you know, so be led by what you would like to do here. So it might be giving your leg a little shake out, might be a bit of circling your ankle, pointing your toes, pointing your heels, spreading your toes out and support around. You can hold around the back of your legs. So maybe around the back of your thigh, interlinking your fingers if you like. Very nice. And then when you've had enough with that leg up, you can bring your foot down to stand on the floor. So you've got both feet standing on the floor. And let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. Feel the contact of the soles of your feet on the floor. And then yes, you are going to start to do that. You're going to start to let your knees tilt to the right and to the left. And as you start to let your knees tilt to the right and to the left, you could feel how the weight shifts across the soles of your feet. So the weight moves sort of from the outer edge of your foot to the inner edge of your foot. That's it. Good. And also the weight, of course, shifts across the back of your pelvis. Now, one of the other things we're going to focus on today, as well as our feet, is movements sort of, I suppose, around the hip joints and the pelvis. So what I'd like you to do now is pause in the centre and take your feet a bit wider apart. So, in fact, they're as wide as the narrow edge of your mat and then come back to tilting your knees and see how that feels with the knees a bit wider apart. And so as you tilt your knees from side to side, just you know, seeing how does this feel into your hip joints, perhaps across the back of your pelvis, into your lower back. And then what I'd like you to do is let your knees come all the way down onto one side. It doesn't matter which side. And then, yeah. And if that's comfortable, stay there. And if it's better to slide a cushion under one of your knees, you can do. But actually what we're going to do from here is, so whichever side your knees are resting down on, you're going to start to roll your weight onto that shoulder. So you're going to let your other shoulder come away from the floor. So you're rolling towards your knees, coming onto that shoulder, coming onto the side of your head. That's it. Nice. Now, what I wanted you to try, and this is the movement which we will come back to, is from here, can you, leaving your legs as they are, can you press down into your top hand and bring yourself up into sitting? That's it, good. So exactly, so when you end up in sitting, you might be in pinwheel and you're going to do a little bit of circling here. And then we're going to try that same, we're going to try to go back into lying in the same way. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold like we do in pinwheel over the knee that's going out to the side. But then can you start to roll? So what you need to do is make sure your bottom arm sort of comes forwards. Can you start to roll back behind that leg so you come back onto your back? That's it. That's nice, good. And then come back to your knees being wide, come back to tilting your knees from side to side. And we're going to do that same thing on the other side. So you're gonna let your knees, in a moment, let your knees come down to the other side. And then leave them there. And then roll towards that shoulder. So that's it. So you're rolling onto that same side of your body where your knees are. And then can you press down into the hand of your top arm and bring yourself up so you're sitting in pinwheel on the other side. And don't worry if it feels a little bit awkward because we'll come back to this later and it might make a little bit more sense. So do a little bit of circling in pinwheel and then we'll do the same thing again. We'll come back down onto our backs. So if we're thinking about folding, so in pinwheel we fold our body over 
this bent leg. But if we're going to come down into line, we only sort of want to roll back behind that leg. So with our bottom arm in front of us, so we can roll onto our backs. And when you've rolled onto your back again, hold your knees into your chest. That's it, have a little rock across the back of your body. That's nice. And bring your legs up to the ceiling. And I think most people have got their socks off now. And what I was gonna get you to do, so you can take your legs up to the ceiling, give them a shake out, but then can you just rub your feet together a little bit? So it might be rubbing one foot on top of the other. Yeah, so can you just use your feet to give each other a little bit of a massage here with your legs up? Good. And from here in a moment, we're going to roll onto our side and we're going to come all the way over into standing. But take your time. So you might want to come back to a little bit of rocking with your knees folded in towards you. And then rocking all the way over onto one side, having a few breaths and then making your way into standing. So a few breaths on your side. And then just making your way over into standing in a comfortable, yeah, in an easy and comfortable way. So arrive in standing. <sighs> and actually the first thing I'd like you to do once you get arrive in standing is to have a look at your feet. So we can use our eyes to just sort of look at our feet on the floor. We want our feet a little distance apart. We want to have our feet parallel which probably means that it's the space between the big toe and second toe that's pointing forwards. And, and then stop looking at your feet. You could close your eyes if you like for a moment and just try to feel your feet from the floor. And you could do a little bit of swaying from side to side. And just see how it feels to be standing on your feet. How does it feel to be taking your weight down or your awareness down into your feet? And from swaying, just make a choice because we're going to come into a little standing balance. Um, so you can choose which foot you're going to stand on. Yes, yeah, so are we going to choose which foot we're going to stand on? It might get confusing. No, I think actually we're going to stand. Yes, choose which foot you're going to stand on. <laughs> I think this will work out. We're going to do this little balance and then we're going to do some foot exercises and then we're going to come back to it. So what you're going to do is you're going to shift your weight onto your standing foot. Your other foot is going to come around the back of your sort of calf or your ankle. Yeah. We've done this one ages ago. And then your standing leg hand comes up. This is actually a mudra. So this is the one which is fearlessness and then... The bottom hand faces forwards. So this is the raised leg hand faces forwards. Both hands face forwards. We've got this qualities of fearlessness and forgiveness. And just, yeah, how does it feel to settle on this first chosen foot? And notice, just notice what's happening to your foot on the floor. What parts of your foot can you feel on the floor? Can you feel the heel? the outer edge of your foot, the ball of your foot, you might feel your toes in contact with the floor. And then what I'd like you to do if you can is just to release your arms. And can you look down at your foot and still stay balancing for a moment and just sort of see what's going on. And if like me, you might and then come down and give your foot a little shake out. Um, you know, what I was feeling was that my toes were gripping the floor and when I looked at them, indeed they were. So let's try the other foot now. So let's do the same balance. Let's shift our weight onto the other foot. So the leg we were just standing on, that ankle wraps around the back of the standing leg calf. The standing leg hand comes up, facing forwards. The raised leg hand is facing forwards, but it's lower down. So this is this um, mudra where we sort of, sim these qualities of um, fearlessness and forgiveness, however those land with you. And then just again, how does your foot, how does this second foot feel on the floor? And it could be quite different, it might feel less steady. What do you feel? Do you feel the heel on the floor, outer edge of the foot? 
maybe like me, you just feel your weight sort of, my weight keeps sort of collapsing onto the inner right edge of my foot more than I'd like the ball of the foot. And that we did on the other side, what's it like if you relax your hands and then just look down at your foot while you're balancing and just see what's going on? And one of the reasons we've got our, <laughs> come down and I'll give you like a little shake out. One of the reasons I came up with doing this balance yesterday is that it doesn't enable us to see our foot because our other leg's out of the way. Come down now into a forward bend. So just, uh, just roll down and have a sort of quiet forward bend for a couple of breaths. And it could be that you're resting your elbows on your thighs. So just, yeah, this first forward bend, just sort of see how it feels in your lower back, in the back of your legs to come forwards. And just stay wherever feels right for you. The knees can be quite bent. Let your head go. <sighs> And then sink into your heels, roll back up into standing. Again, just give your feet a little shake out. And then we're gonna try a foot exercise in standing. And then we're going to do the same thing in a forward bend. So what I'd like you to try to do first of all is lift all your toes up off the floor and try and feel your weight. And you can look down at your feet, feel your weight in your heels, the outer edge of your foot across the ball of your foot. Now, is it possible at this point then to put your big toes down and keep all the other toes up. And if that's the case, if that's possible, is it then possible to put your little toes down and keep the three middle toes up? And then is it possible to let the three middle toes just relax down onto the floor without gripping? Now let's try the same thing in a forward bend because you might want to use your fingers to hold your toes down. So come back into a forward bend. Let all your toes lift up and then use your fingers to help you bring your big toes and your little toes down onto the floor and keep your three middle toes lifted. And, once you, and also try to encourage your big toes to come towards each other and your little toes to move away. So the big toes and little toes, you can try to encourage them to move away from the other toes. That's another point. And then let your three middle toes relax down onto the ground. And then just let yourself soften in your forward bend. And sink into your heels, roll back into standing. Now, one of the problems is when we start to really focus on our feet, we can sort of do too much and they can start to get a bit tense. So give them a shake out. Because often you say, oh, I've got my feet really well organized. I want to keep them there. But we're, we're actually going to do some more exercises. So let's start with the right foot. And what I'd like you to do is to roll onto the outer edge of your right foot a few times and see how that feels. So see how that feels in the foot, see how it feels in your ankle. So rolling onto the outer edge of your right foot. And then let your foot come forward to so do that tapping on the floor that we did last week and we did on our back. And when we're in standing, you can also tap your foot in a little bit of a circle. And I was putting my hands on my pelvis to feel that my pelvis isn't moving but my leg is moving in my hip joint and you can or can't, you know, don't have to do that. And then come up onto the ball of your foot and roll across the ball of your foot from the base of your big toe to the base of your little toe and try to feel that you're doing a bit of a massage across the ball of your foot. And again, notice how that feels. If you're anything like me, it's like, oh my goodness, my foot feels so stiff and creaky. And then let the foot come back onto the floor. And just before we move on to the other side, a couple of times, two or three times, come back to rolling onto the outer edge of this first foot again and see how that feels. And then before we move on to side two, what I'd like you to do is close your eyes and feel both feet on the floor. And just see if you feel a difference or what do you feel? What difference do you feel between the two feet? And I often find when I've done this, I feel that my foot that I've just worked feels that it's sort of deeper into the ground somehow. But, you know, we all feel very different things. And then let's move on to side two. So start to roll onto the outer edge of your second foot. I can't remember that I said left or right, so it might be your left foot if you're doing the same as me. So roll onto the outer edge of that foot a few times. See how that feels. 
And then come to do some of that tapping of your foot. Up and down and around a bit of a circle if you like. So all of these movements are about bringing our awareness into our feet, but also releasing tension from the feet. And then up onto the ball of your foot, rolling across the ball of the foot. How does this feel? What we're really trying to do here is feel the base of each toe on the ground, but it's, that's quite tricky. I can feel my base of my big toe, base of my little toe, but it's harder to get the points in between to make contact with the ground. And then finally, rolling again onto the outer edge of that foot. Okay, and we're going to revisit now that same twist we did a moment ago, that same twist, that same um, balance we did a moment ago, we're going to revisit. So if you can remember which foot you stood on first, you're going to bring your weight onto that foot. And so it's the balance where we're wrapping one foot around the back of our calf and then the standing leg hand comes up the um, raised leg hand is down both hands are facing forwards and just letting ourselves settle here and again ceiling seeing how does your standing foot feel on the floor and also in this balance maybe we can be aware of the hands in this mudra facing forwards we can maybe be aware of the breath flowing through us as well Just let yourself maybe have another two couple of cycles of breath. Or even more if you feel steady, good. Very nice. Good, come down. Give your legs a little shake out. And then again, we'll try the same thing on the other side. So shifting your weight onto the second foot and just noticing if like me this foot is perhaps a little less steady on the floor just trying to so obviously that the um that foot you're standing on that hand comes up the raised leg the hand faces forwards so as i was saying if this foot's a bit less steady for you just see if you can be aware of the heel the outer edge of the foot the ball of the foot on the floor what are your toes doing? Can your three middle toes feel long and relaxed? Very nice. And obviously feeling the hands facing forwards. Have the elbow of the bottom arm spent rather than straight. So that arm is a little bit more relaxed, I think, if the elbow is bent. Good. That's nice. Let the breath, let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. Well done and then come down have a little shake out and fold down into another forward bend. <sighs> if you like in your forward bend you, you can do those sort of weeping willow movements trailing your fingertips around to the left and to the right. Feeling very rooted through your heels letting your spine tumble forwards that's nice lovely. Letting the breath come in, letting the breath leave you. And then in your own time, sink down into your heels, come back up into standing. We're going to do a couple, a, a couple more things in standing, um, but first we'll just come to this loose, easy, swinging twist. And then we're going to do a couple more things focusing on our feet. In standing, good. Swinging your arms to the left and to the right, letting the whole of your body come along with this movement. And just a couple more times. So I think, you know, when we focus in on our feet, it can get very sort of detailed and focused. So then it's good to um, come to something like this, which is bit more open and free. Okay, what we're going to do now is work from one of these, these movements where we're stepping one foot forwards. So make sure you've got a bit of space in front of you on the mat. 
and you're going to step one of your feet forward. So make sure as we do this, you've still got your sort of sideways distance. And then just come to this movement where we're rocking forwards and back. Weight into the, so the front heel stays on the ground. We bring the front, so that's it, the front toes up. We bring the back heel up. Good. Shifting forwards and back, feeling our feet on the floor. And then eventually we're going to settle here. <sighs> Maybe bring your hands onto your pelvis because we're going to come back and swing our arms. But what I'd like you to try and feel this time is that you're not moving below the waist. So can you swing your arms and you can move your shoulders, but you're trying not to let your pelvis move. So it's a bit more fixed than the last twist we were doing, that's it. Good. And I suppose in a way, the more planted we can be through the feet, the easier it is to keep the pelvis where it is. We're going to come into a forward bend from here, and we're actually going to go down from our forward bend into the sort of sprint position. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, watch me, because we're going to fold forwards onto the front thigh. Then we're going to go a bit lower, and then we're going to start to bend the back knee. So we come all the way down to the ground, and then we're going to reverse this movement. So we've come all the way down, and then start to reverse the movement. So you're then straightening your back leg, your chest stays close to your thigh, and then just stay in the forward bend. Yeah, so, so you stay in the forward bend. You, you could be resting down onto your bent front thigh with your elbow, or you could be resting your body down onto that bent front thigh. <sighs> and just have a couple of breaths there. And coming up as you exhale, sinking down into your heels. Good. Step your foot back in, and then you're going to step your other foot forwards. Good, so you've got the other foot step forwards. We're coming back to this rocking forwards and back. Think feeling the footprints on the ground, trying to drop our awareness down into our feet and then eventually settling the feet on the ground. So we want both feet pointing forwards, we want a bit of sideways space between the feet. Hands on the pelvis, can we feel really planted from the waist down? And then what's it like to swing the arms but try not to move the pelvis? I mean, it may move a bit and that's fine, but we're, we're trying to have this. A so strange movement where we're our upper body and shoulders and ribs are moving, but our pelvis and legs are not. So we're divided in our middle. And then we'll do that same forward bend down into that sprinting position. Maybe have a couple of breaths in the forward bend. So you can come forwards, the front knee bends. You can rest down onto the front thigh with your forearms. You can fold down into a forward bend, let your head go, let your arms go. Have a breath or two here and then start bending your back knee. So you start going down into this sprint position. And it can be quite strong for the back toes. So, so can, the, can the knee come down onto the ground? It may or may not. So down into the sprint position. And then you're going to reverse the movement back into the forward bend for another couple of breaths. So either resting your chest on your thigh or resting your forearms on your thigh, letting your head go. Try to feel steady through your footprints. And then as you exhale, sinking down into your heels, coming back up into standing. A little shake of your feet. We're going to come back to stepping our first foot forwards again. We're going to be coming into a balance now. So taking our weight into our, our front foot in a moment. So, yes, yeah, so whichever foot was stepped forwards first, step that foot forwards and bring your hands into, so I've got my front knee bent, I've got my hands in prayer pose at my heart. And in a moment, we're gonna shift our weight onto our front foot and bend the back knee. So we're in this sort of funny, exaggerated running position. And then we're going to start to reach the back heel back behind us. Let the standing knee start to straighten, but not lock. And let our body maybe tip forwards a little bit and just see, can, can we feel long from our back heel through to the crown of our head? Don't have to go really far forwards. 
but really reach back into your back heel. Good, very nice. Lovely. That's it. Yeah, really reach the back heel back behind you. Good. Super. Yeah, wonderful. Come back up. Have a little shake out. We'll do the other side. So step the other foot forwards. Bend your front knee. So at this point, we just want to really be down in our feet, feeling our feet on the floor. Hands in prayer pose at your heart. So keep your front knee bent, bring the back foot off the floor, both knees are bent. It's funny sort of running position. And then start to really reach back behind you with the raised heel. Let your standing knees straighten, but not lock. You can stay a bit bent. Try to really breathe yourself long from your back heel through to the crown of your head. Good, very nice. Good, yes, come down, have a little, when you've come down, any, uh, yes, sort of shake, shaking out is one thing. Sorry, it seems to be very dark in my room. I don't know why that is. Shake out your legs. And one thing I just wanted you to do was to, one at a time, come onto the top of your foot. So you just stretch out the front of your ankle. So do that on both sides. And then we're just gonna settle for a moment in standing and see how it feels to be in standing before we come down and do some other things. So settle in standing with your feet a little distance apart. And it's up to you, you could just let your arms hang. Or if you like to bring one hand onto your belly, one hand onto your chest, you could do. And if you like to close your eyes, you could close your eyes. And just see how it feels to be in standing. So if you bring your awareness to your feet, how do the feet feel on the floor? Can you let your shoulders soften and drop? Can you feel a cycle or two of breath moving through you? And then we're going to come into another forward bend. And when we're in the forward bend, you remember from last week, we're going to do this one squat where we turn our feet out and come down into a squat. But come into your forward bend, first of all, with your feet parallel. Roll into your forward bend. Again, you can keep your elbows on your thighs and just give yourself a few breaths in your forward bend and see how that feels. Letting your breath come in, letting your breath leave you. Good, and then you're from this forward bend, you're going to come into this squat where you turn your feet out. And obviously as you bend your knees, you want your knees to bend out in line with your feet. So your knees are bending out to the sides. And you might find this makes it easier to keep your heels down. And you can always bring your hands together in sort of prayer pose in front of you. And from this squat, we're not gonna stay here a huge, long period of time. What I'd like you to do is bring your hands onto the floor behind you if you can and sort of gently lower your bottom down and come to sit in, actually, yes, come to sit in cobbler pose and just see how that feels. So yes, I was going to suggest just a bit of what would be feel nice, a bit, you could be a bit of rocking, could be a little bit of circling, could be some of these side lengthening movements. So I just, yeah, I'd like you to do a little bit of what feels good to you today in cobbler pose to help you settle here. It could be a little bit of folding, folding forwards. It could be a bit of leaning back on your hands. So if it's, you know, if you're feeling quite a stretch through the thighs or you feel that the knees are quite high, then leaning back might help the knees to drop a little bit. And we're going to do a bit of work on our feet here, just sort of briefly. What you're going to do is take your opposite hand and foot and with your palm facing the sole of your foot, you're going to thread your fingers in between your toes. So I quite like to do this in cobbler pose and bring one foot on top of the other. You don't have to. If it's more comfortable, 
you could be leaning on your back arm and you could be straightening out one leg and then your foot can always sort of come and rest on that leg. You know, so really do whatever feels right for your legs. And then just a little bit of massaging. So you, I think we should all be there. You've got your feet, yes, that's it. You've got your fingers interlaced in between your toes and you're massaging, massaging the foot, the ball of the foot. So if you've, if you've got the same foot, <laughs> yeah, it needs to be opposite hand and foot, I think, otherwise you feel like you're tying yourself in a knot. So swap sides, do the other one. So we've got other pair of opposite hands and feet, trying to thread our fingers between our toes, and then a bit of massaging the ball of the foot. And again, this is, you know, I think I, I'm certainly, I don't, probably like lots of you doing, <laughs> You know, the dog, you always do lots of walking, but I think we're all maybe doing more walking at the moment than um, we would normally. So our feet are probably um, a bit more stiff and it's that sort of end of winter thing. When you've done both sides, just lengthen your legs out for a moment, give them a little bit of a roll. And then come back into cobbler pose and we're gonna do a twist in cobbler pose. So in this twist, and just decide how close you want your feet to your bottom or how further away. In this twist, what we're going to do is one hand is going to come towards the feet or the ankles and the other hand is going to come back behind us and we're turning towards one leg. And really use your, if I turn the side on, use your, your back hand to help support your spine because it's very easy in cobbler pose to sort of slump a bit. That's it. So we're trying to let the shoulders drop feel wide across the front of the chest, breath or two, and then we'll turn in the other direction. I'll just swing around so I don't turn away from you. So turn in the other direction. Again, use your back hand, use those fingers to help support your spine. Trying to let the shoulders drop and you can obviously hold on to your feet somehow with the other hand. You've got these a bit like sort of guy ropes, I suppose, your arms to help tether your spine upright. Good. Okay, and then again, come lean back on your hands, lengthen your legs out. You might be wondering at this point, where, where are we getting with, um, we haven't done any dog pose, so we're going to be coming on to hands and knees. And when you arrive on hands and knees, what I'd like you to do a few times is tuck your toes under and then untuck them. And from hands and knees, we're going to be moving into some things where we have the feet flat and some things where we tuck the toes under. So first of all, I'd like you to do just a little bit of rocking forwards and back. So you're going to tuck the toes under, rock your hips back over your heels. Come back onto hands and knees, untuck your toes and then rock your hips back over your heels. Just think of this as, I suppose, an exercise for the feet. So that's it. We're just alternating. So one time you rock back, your toes are tucked under. One time you rock back, your feet are untucked. And then when you're ready, when, and, um, when you rock back with your toes tucked under, you can take that all the way into a dog pose. So tucking your toes under, rocking your hips back and up into dog. And yes, seeing how it feels to be in dog pose. <sighs> Having a few breaths in dog. It's always interesting, maybe coming to dog pose a little bit later than we would generally do. So how does your dog pose feel? Do you, does it feel that you need to use quite a lot of movement to help release tension? Or can you be in dog and experience it and feel the movement of your breath through your body? And when I say movement, I generally mean bending one knee, bending both knees. Good. So whenever you want to come down from dog, come down from dog, untuck your toes, and then round your back to the ceiling, rock your hips back over your heels, come into child pose, so with our feet flat on the floor, or kneeling if you prefer, that's fine. And just have a couple of quiet cycles of breath in kneeling or child pose, feeling the fronts of your feet opening out, the fronts of the ankles.
And then come back onto hands and knees and lengthen each leg out in turn behind you and tuck your toes under as we let the backs of the knees open. And then come back to a little bit of rocking forwards and back and this time keeping your toes tucked under. And this time we're going to take our rocking back into our delightful sort of, I suppose it's like part way to a squat, so coming up onto the balls of our feet. And at this point we could spread our toes out a little bit. So yeah, so come up onto the balls of your feet first and do a little bit of rocking here. So it's a bit of massaging again into the balls of the feet. And then from here we can come into this delightful one that some of you have looked <laughs> Keen to get into, so sitting back over our heels. <sighs> How does it feel to let the shoulders drop? This delightful old favourite. So toes tucked under, sitting back over our heels, having a couple of breaths here. And of course, come forwards, come out a bit if it starts to get too much, which can often happen. So we can come forwards, we can untuck our toes, we can rub our feet on the floor, so against the tops of the feet on the floor. And then come back into dog pose. So tuck your toes under again, rock your hips back over your heels, come back up into dog pose. And in this dog pose, I was thinking you could work into your feet a bit by rolling onto the ball of one foot and then onto the tip of the toes and then onto the top of the toes. So one foot at a time, you can carry on this work into your feet, coming up into the ball of your foot, your tip of your toes, the top of your toes. So that movement where you're stretching out the front of your ankle. And have another couple of breaths in dog pose. Good. When you come back down from dog, you're either going to sit in kneeling, so sitting on your heels, or if you, yeah, you, you can really choose, or you can sit down in between your heels in Varasana. So we're going to be doing a little bit of sort of going back and just lengthening out through the quads. So choose, choose which is better for you, either sitting down in between the heels or sitting on the heels. And it might, yeah. And particularly which is better for you to help find this feeling of stretching through the quads a bit. So both of these movements lengthen us out through the tops of the feet. Um, and we can choose, we might, you know, do come in and out a little bit. So as you go back, we're trying to let the pelvis tuck under. It's always a little bit challenging through the, the neck and shoulders in these ones. You don't have to stay too long. What I was thinking is it might be quite good to do this a couple of times. So maybe come onto hands and knees, stretch each leg out and turn behind you, come back into either kneeling or sitting in between your heels, come back into those, revisit it again, and then we'll, we'll do one last dog pose. So, so if you're sitting in between your heels, you can always sit on a cushion. Your, your sit bones do need to be down on the ground or on a cushion on a block. And just what's it like to, I know some of you find this movement easy, quite challenging. So we're looking for this bit of a stretch through our quads. You look down at your belly, you're trying to avoid that lower back arching too much. Okay, and then from here, We'll come back into one last dog pose. You're tucking your toes under, rocking your hips back over your heels, arriving in dog, seeing how dog pose feels. And you could, if you like in this dog, do your one leg dog. So again, just depending how dog pose feels, how you're feeling, how your energy levels are feeling. Have a few breaths in a normal dog, and then it can feel really nice to um, lift one leg, maybe let your pelvis roll to reach back behind you through your heel. 
good. So it's yet another way to bring our awareness into our feet. And obviously our awareness is still with the foot that remains on the floor. So when you come down from dog pose, I'd like you to sit. I'm sitting and kneeling facing the long edge of my mat, which um, you might want to do. Because from here, we're going to be moving into pinwheels. So what I'm going to do from here is from kneeling, I'm going to sit down onto one side, slide my legs a little bit further apart, and a little bit of circling. Yeah. So in a moment, we're going to come and revisit what we were doing at the beginning of class, this moving from pinwheel onto our backs. But first of all, I thought we'd do a little bit of um, our favourite pigeon pose, or not so favourite for some of us. So when we've done a little bit of circling here in pinwheel, we can then let our knee slide back a little bit, line it up with the edge of the mat, and then we can start to lengthen our other leg back behind us. So remember, you could be, you know, as, you can be as sort of off center as you like in your pigeon. I suppose probably the main, you know, the most important thing is your front knee is happy. If your front knee is happy for you to let your pelvis roll over, might be in the top of your thigh comes off the floor and your pelvis is level. And then in your pigeon pose, see how it feels and I think if we can bear it maybe we'll have a couple of cycles of buzzing breath if at any point you've had enough just sort of roll out onto your front leg thigh and lengthen lean back on your arms otherwise let the breath come in Okay, so if you can bear another cycle of buzzing breath in pigeon, you can either stay where you are, go a bit lower, go a bit higher. Let your breath come in. nice and yes you can come out of pigeon you can just sort of roll onto front leg hip maybe give each leg give each leg give both legs a little leg for that behind you and then let's come back into kneeling just so we can remember to come onto our other, other side so from kneeling we sit our pelvis down onto the other side so we come to the sort of side sitting and then slide our legs apart and come into a little bit of circling here. The sort of circling, settling is always um, helpful preparation for pigeon. We're gonna see how our pigeon feels on this side. So remember at any point, you don't have to stay in pigeon. You can roll out onto this front leg. So this, this leg that we've, we're sliding back a little bit now, sliding our leg back, leaning our weight over that leg so we can lengthen the other leg back behind us. Either keeping our pelvis off at a bit of an angle or trying to roll our pelvis so the back of our pelvis is level. Maybe it means the front leg thigh comes off the floor as long as your knees happy with that. Find a place you can settle in pigeon. It could be on your elbows. You could be resting down on your forehead. You could be coming up onto your hands. And yes, any little rocking you want to do in pigeon is, is good. And we'll have our couple of cycles of buzzing breath on this side. So let a breath come in. And 
once more, if you can stay in pigeon a bit longer for another buzzing breath, you come out if you've had enough. So let your breath come in. Exactly, when you're ready, rolling out of pigeon, give your legs a little bit of a lengthen out in front of you. So this time we'll come into pinwheel going via our cobbler pose. And obviously if you want to stay in cobbler pose for a few breaths, then of course you're very welcome to do that. And I'll, I'll just remind you, so if you want to stay in cobbler pose, um, why don't you watch them? if you want to watch what I'm doing. Um, so what we're going to be exploring in pinwheel is folding over the knee that's going out to the side. And then also this movement that can we let ourselves roll onto our back. And then from our back, can we roll up again? So what I'd like you to do, I suppose, perhaps a couple of times on the first side is to roll onto your back from pinwheel and to come back up again, just sort of see. So when I, think about, when I think about going from here, I think about folding over my leg, but then I'm just sort of rolling back behind the leg and I have to make sure my bottom arm comes out of the way, my bottom shoulder comes out of the way so I can then roll up onto my back. And then you could come all the way onto your back, but you might get too comfortable. So then you just let your knees fall down to that side, roll onto the shoulder, press down through the top arm. Bring yourself back into into pinwheel and just try that a couple that's nice try that a couple of times on that side so we're in pinwheel we fold over our leg we're trying to then sort of roll back behind that thigh onto the bottom shoulder bringing our head onto the floor and then we try and reverse that movement let the knees tip back down to the floor roll onto your bottom shoulder press down through your top hand Good, come back upright. And we can try it on the other side. So let's go through cobbler pose. Let's come into pinwheel on the other side. And the same thing. So we're moving from our pinwheel forward bend and then just thinking about how can we come onto our back. So we're letting ourselves sort of roll back behind that leg, back onto our shoulder, onto our back. And then can we let the knees tilt back to the side? Can we roll back onto our shoulders, sink into our top hand, come back up? Very nice. Um, yeah, maybe go down, down and up again, and then that you can stay down after that. So maybe one more time, folding into pinwheel, rolling back behind your leg. If you like you can stay down if you want maybe come back up if you like and then one more time and then then you can stay down the back in pinwheel forward bend that's it let your bottom arm come underneath roll onto your back and then yes you can let yourself stay on your back this time and just settle on your back we're going to do little bit of a twist in a moment but I think just arrive on your back and yes letting your knees have your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor and just letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left And then if you pause in the middle, you can cross your arms over your chest. And then you can do a sort of more of a sort of rocking from side to side across the back of your body. If you're giving, so you've got your arms crossed over your chest and then you can let the elbows and the head and the knees all tilt to the right and then to the left. This is where we give our back of our body a bit of a massage and the room is coming back to the beginning of that sort of rocking movement we were doing. 
it could take us to our side and into sitting, but it won't at this point. <laughs> we'll be here all day. Okay. And then pause in the center. Uncross your arms and fold your knees into your chest. I'm going to do what is my favourite thing at the moment. So it's um, obviously folding my knees to my chest is taking the legs up to the ceiling, giving them a shake out. And then letting the knees fold back into the chest. And from here, we're going to go into a floor twist. And for some reason I've got very into this recently. So the knees fold into the chest, wrap one arm around the back of your thighs, bring the other arm down onto the floor at shoulder height. And then you're going to this, this simple familiar twist. We're going to let the knees slowly come down onto the, arm, the side where the arm is supporting them. So you can keep your arms supporting your knees. You don't have to take your knees all the way down to the floor. They may not reach. And I quite like to keep my arms supporting my knees. So my knees stay quite close to my chest. You can, of course, release your legs to the floor if that's more comfortable, or you can slide a cushion under your legs if there's one to hand. Very nice. Good. And just have a few cycles of breath and just see how possible is it? Can you settle? Can you settle in this twist? And some days we can, some days we don't feel so settled. So you can always come back, bring your knees back to the centre. But if you're settled in the twist, then stay there. Good. And, and for me, this, um, I think what makes this twist particularly enjoyable is when we come back to the centre, if we take the legs back up to the ceiling, there's something about, I think, when we lengthen the legs up to the ceiling, and then fold the knees into our chest. It really helps the lower back, I find anyway, lengthen out. And the knees be very sort of snug towards the chest. So swap your arms over and see how it feels to come into the second side of the twist. And again, you know, I've spent a long time with this twist not being able to settle into it. And it's really only in the last couple of weeks that I've found a way into it again where it can feel settled so again if it doesn't feel settled you don't need to stay there it might be that you need a cushion under your legs you need to take your arm out is it possible to rest and breathe yes so any little adjustments you need to make that are Lovely. And in your own time, you can just come back to the center again. When you come back to the center, you might like to take your legs back up towards the ceiling one last time. Oh, yes. And I just remembered what I had as our last thing. You might want some cushions for this. So you might want to put on warm things. I thought we could finish, and it might not be that you say that, that here that it's long, but I thought we could finish with a little bit of lying down, supine, um, cobbler pose, breathing here. And for me, I need to support my legs. You can have your hands and little fists to support your thighs. That's one way. But if you've got some cushions, it might be more comfortable. We're going to bring our hands to our belly and have some breaths here. And again, it might be that you just have a few breaths and then you bring your feet to stand back on the floor. So if that sounds like that would be a nice way to finish, then yes, organize yourself so you can lie in cobbler pose on your back in a way, in a way that means you can focus on your breathing and it's not just about too much of a stretch on your inner thighs. So settling down and in this one, I think it's quite nice to have the hands quite low on the belly, you can sort of beneath the belly button. Because we have this sort of feeling of width and space across the front of the belly with the, the knees out to the side and 
Just gather your attention into your breathing. You can maybe feel the feel your belly responding to the movement of your breath. Rising and falling. And your belly can also feel the warmth and the weight of your hands. And just stay in cobbler pose only as long as it feels enjoyable. So it might be that you know, for you now, you need to bring your feet to stand on the floor, or it might be particularly if you've got cushions there, that just, this just feels a nice place to be and you'd like to carry on having a few more breaths. So sort of make a decision that suits you and your body. I'm just going to allow you to stay quietly with your breath for another couple of minutes. So I'll sort of leave it up to you whether you're going to stay in cobbler pose, whether you want to bend your knees, bring your feet to stand on the floor, or even fold into your chest, or whether you want to lengthen your legs out on the ground. Letting your body rest on the ground. Letting your awareness settle with your breathing, feeling the movement of your breath through your body. Not trying to change your breathing in any way. But just giving each in breath and each out breath, the space and the time that they need. We allow the inhalation to expand within us, to widen us. We can allow the out breath to empty us to help us settle a bit more heavily on the ground. So thank you everyone, take your time. Nice to see you lying there so peacefully. Thanks, Kara. That was lovely. That was unexpected to do something with feet, but really appreciate oh. it. <laughs>